All right, back to the never-ending quest of trying to keep our Pokemon enslaved. I'm Dio Gen Z, and you're watching my Pokemon White walkthrough. You know, it took me a while to figure out why exactly they won't let Pokemon come out outside of their Pokeballs anymore, like in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, because that was really an awesome feature, and I don't know why they cut that. But then I thought about it, and you realize you're fighting against Team Plasma. Epic battle music and intro right here. And uh, their whole thing is that they're trying to liberate Pokemon from the abusive reign of humans. Even though they themselves have Pokemon captured inside Pokeballs. If they were really hardcore, they would just call Pokemon, like, from the wild. They would be like the Pied Piper and be like, Come to me, Minazumi! You and your coked out eyes of crazy bidoofiness. Ow! Why dare you bite me? Hmm. Okay, Leer doesn't matter. We can hit you with one more side beam, and it misses. Oh, uh, let's see. We want to keep Indra. I yeah. Okay, good. See, you can make gambles, and why does Indra keep missing? This is bullshit. Thank you. Okay, yes, you can make gambles in this game that uh, the enemy AI will be stupid. I will say this though: they have improved their algorithms. I noticed that from the last games, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. The fact that the uh, enemies actually try to strategize a bit. To quote our uh, past idiotic president, G. Dub Bush. And look, they have two more waiting for us. How nice of them. And you know what? Charon's here, so what the hell? Let's do a double battle. Yeah, so uh, that's probably it. You know, you're fighting against the uh, team who's trying to liberate Pokemon. So why would you have your Pokemon outside of its ball? All liberated and free and just like walking around. You know, they wouldn't do that. So uh, that's probably, that's my theory at least, for why Pokemon are not allowed to come outside of their ball. Either that or the developers were just too lazy to put in the Pokemon sprites. I don't know. I mean, it might have something to do with the fact that the camera angles later on in the game are going to get pretty hectic, but if you can change around the main character's sprite according to the camera angles, I don't see why it would be a problem to have Pokemon follow you. I'm not asking for the whole team to trail behind me, I'm just asking for the first Pokemon in my party to do that. Is that too much to ask? Apparently. Now that right there is probably Bide and uh, freaking Pokeboo going for the Ember and uh, it's going to set off that freaking Minizume. Yep, whenever they use Bide, I usually take the time to heal my Pokemon with potions and whatnot. Well, he's still biding his time. And at this point, I think we can take him out. Aha, your waiting has failed. Patience is a virtue? Bah! Bullshit! Fight now! Patience later. Okay, so Team Plasma has fallen again. Why they're in this cave? I have no idea. Does this cave have any significance? I don't know! Will it in the future? We'll find out! And they're mysteriously gone again. They love to disappear. And Charon's like, all right, thanks for having my back. And I'm like, all right, go do your own Pokemon journey now. Seriously, stop following me. Enough is enough. I don't need my hand held for this whole game. Please. I'd appreciate it if you just get the fuck out. Okay, well, there is a body of water here, and it's uh, quite massive. So I'm going to assume we're going to have to come back here at some point when we have Surf and explore the cave further. Who knows what could be lurking inside. But you know what? I do want to know what lurks inside. At least in the wild Pokemon department. And if there's anything worth catching here. Huh. Are there wild Pokemon here? There should be. There we go. Alright. I was getting worried. I was like, wait a second. Is it broken? Does the cave not work? Yes, it does. And this right here is a Dangoro. Now, I will not be catching a Dangoro because, uh, quite frankly, I don't want a Gantoru or a Gigaisu, which is what it evolves into. And uh, that is the 
big rocky Pokemon that was leaked out. Well, not leaked out, but let out early. And, uh, yeah, I just have no interest in it. But I just want to know it was in the cave, and I guess Don Goro is in the, in the cave. I guess he's like the new Geodude. Probably. Even though he looks sort of like a nose pass and a bell bum baby. Yeah, that, that's kind of what he looks like. And now we get some kind of item in Thanks for Chasing Off uh, Team Plasma. Maybe, I don't know, if we did, like... Yeah, I think we just got an item. I don't know. I, you know, I'm not even checking my bag to see if we're getting things from trainers or stuff. Or if they're just, like, saying things like, Oh, you're my best friend! Here, blue text, just to throw you off, Dio Gen Z. So, I, I don't know. Alright, new Pokemon. Shimama. And, uh, directly above, north, uh, in that patch of grass, you can find yourself a Shimama. And, uh, this is the Electric Zebra. I'm gonna pass on Shimama, just because I want to keep my party open for cooler members. Not that he's not totally awesome. I mean, an Electric Zebra. Pretty cool. And also, I think he has the benefits of having Fire-type moves. I'm not sure. But for now, he's just using Electric types, which, uh, that's gonna be good for us, because Sven is a Grass-type, and Grass-types are quite resistant to Electric types. So that Shimama did not have any Fire-type moves, but I have seen some who have. That's just not one of them. And... okay. Wild Pokémon. Mampato! Please, I'm begging you, let me in your walkthrough! No! I will not. I won't even battle you. You're not even worth my time or have the, having the experience. No, truly, I just didn't want to waste switching out my Sven and doing all that bull. Just trying to get the item. Oh, you couldn't just die for me? Well, that was something I forgot to mention back in that cave there, is uh, Dangoro has the ability Sturdy. And Sturdy has been in Pokemon before, but it hasn't done what it does now. It got an upgrade, basically with a lot of other abilities and moves, might I add. And now Sturdy will prevent one-hit KOs, which is obnoxious. And speaking of obnoxious, it's Charon! Like five feet from where we saw him last. Thankfully he doesn't want to battle and get another ass whooping. He says something about the grass. Oh, okay, there's more Mampato here. Damn it, Charon. You led me to believe there was something here. Well, I don't want to really stick around for this. Let's see if we could tackle him out. Oh, great. You're going to growl us. Um, hmm. Oh, man. He used an ability? What was that? I don't even know. Yeah, but uh, Dan Goro's ability, Sturdy, will prevent one-hit KOs, which is basically like a focus sash. Um... And, uh, that is just complete bull. So now you can't even one-hit KO certain Pokémon anymore. And, uh, it's, it's minor annoyance, really. Because, as you saw, Dan Goro didn't really put up a fight for my Grass-type here. Sutarja is just too strong. And he's getting stronger. Getting stronger all the time. Oh, we learned a move here? Um... Let's see. What is this move? I guess we'll find out. Cool, Sven learned something! We'll test that out later. Maybe right now. Yep, so uh, a lot of the abilities have gotten an overhaul on them, along with moves. Weaker moves are now stronger. Not by much, but they have an extra 10 or 20 damage thrown into them. Which I suppose is nice. But, uh, overall annoying. And here we're seeing another Pokémon, Koromori. Now, unfortunately... I guess this thing isn't poison. Alright, I was wondering if this was kind of like a, uh, a coughing. But, really this thing is psychic flying. Um, 
But let's see if we can defeat it with just Sven. I think Sven's got enough tackle in him to do the job. As long as he doesn't... Okay, never mind. Use a gust. We were gonna be fine, but freaking Koromori had to use gust. Yeah, so it's a psychic flying type. And now we intimidated it, and it's weak and powerless to us. I really love that about Hadaria, is uh, it has that awesome intimidation ability, so when you switch out, any physical moves become utterly useless. Just like that. And now we can just tackle the hell away. I could have used Bite, but I didn't want to waste some uh, power points on it. Yep, and now he's out. But uh, it really should be interesting to see what comes of the new abilities and new moves when it comes out in English and everybody's playing the metagame. Look at how beautiful that water is. What the hell is that? Well, I'm not sure what that is. Um, this is a wild Pokemon here. Another Mampato. Man, these things just keep showing up. I will not add you in my walkthrough. No! Yeah, but I can't wait to see how the new abilities affect the metagame. Already, I think that the sturdy ability is sort of useless, even with the ability now added to prevent one-hit KOs. Solely on the basis that any any good metagame player usually has um, Stealth Rocks in, active, uh, in the active playing field. Or Spikes, or Toxic Spikes, or Sandstorm, or something to chip away at Sturdy's ability. Because remember, it's only one hit KOs. So if he gets, say, uh, hit with a Razor Leaf, let's go with that. And it almost kills him, but he has one HP left. But there's uh, Sandstorm, or he got Toxic, or he even fell on Spikes then he will not uh, live with the sturdy. So, truly, there are easy ways to counteract the new abilities. But I can't wait to, s wait to see how they will play out in the metagame. And this episode was pretty much just me babbling on uh, about new mechanics. Not a bad video, but overall, we didn't really get anywhere far. We did finish the route, and... Uh, we're coming up on the time limit. So after this guy, um, wonderful, there's a Dangoro. I don't think I'll be taking him out anymore with a one-hit KO. Uh, of course, you gotta use Rock Polish. That's what I assume that is. Uh, yeah, we're not gonna take him out with a one-hit KO. Because unfortunately, my Sutarja was outdone by that Koromori. I don't like Koromori. Uh, I'm not a fan. It, uh, it evolves into a more weird kind of Pokemon. Uh, it remains psychic flying, and that evolution is called Coco Romori. I don't know if we'll see one, I'm sure we will in the future. But uh, I'm not a fan. However, I am a fan of ending the video off here with this beautiful landscape of our next town where we will be getting our next badge. So I'll see you then, guys.